All right, let's go ahead and take a look at an example of a tangent line approximation. So in a prior video, I tried to kind of explain the concept behind it, although I know it's a little bit difficult without looking at an actual example, I think. So here it says, use the line tangent of the graph of y equals square root of x at x equals 9 to approximate square root of 9.1. So a key thing they're saying here is use the line tangent to the graph of this at x equals 9. So, I mean, that kind of tells you from the start, to, in order to use the line, you probably have to come up with it first. So that's going to be our first thing. But before we get there, I just want to go ahead and make a quick sketch of what this graph looks like. Just give us a reference. Okay, so square root of x, and I'm just doing a, a very basic sketch, looks kind of like this. That's y equals square root of x. Okay, so let's say, for instance, you know, let's say here's x equals 9. Okay, so we're looking for, you know, x equals 9 on the graph is right here. Okay, and so 9.1 is, you know, just to, just to the right of that um, point right there, and you know that's where we're <coughs> looking to find the y value. So the idea here, of course, square root of nine point one. You know, it's not a perfect square, so it's it's a difficult thing for us to figure out if we don't have our calculator handy. Okay, but square root of nine is very easy for us to figure out because we know square root of nine is equal to three. Okay, so we have a you know that's a, a perfect square right there, and so it works out. You know that uh, you know. Uh, 9.1 is very close to 9, so therefore we can use a tangent line approximation to approximate this value. So, here is the deal. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and make a tangent line to the graph of square root of x at x equals 9. So in order to do that, I need a point and a slope. So I have the x-coordinate, the x-coordinate is 9. To find the y-coordinate, I just plug it into the equation, square root of 9 is 3. So my point is 9, comma 3. All right. In order to come up with a slope, I need to take the derivative here of my function. So let's see, I'll rewrite it as y equals x to the one half. And then when I take the derivative of that, it becomes one half x to the negative one half, which I could rewrite if I wanted to as one over two square root of x. All right. So that's the derivative right there of square root of x. Now I want the slope at x equals nine. So I'm going to take nine and plug it into my derivative. All right, so I'll end up getting 1 over 2 square root of 9, which can simplify to 1 over 2 times 3, which is 1 over 6. So I have 1 over 6 is uh, the slope of my function at x equals 9. So I have my point, I have my slope. From that, I can easily make a tangent line. So my tangent line is going to be y1, or y minus y1 is equal to m, the slope, 1 6 and then x minus x1. There's my tangent line. So just for a visual to help us out, this tangent line right here is the, the line tangent of the graph at x equals 9. Okay, so if I just try and kind of sketch that tangent line, it looks like this. Okay, kind of like that. And again, like I said in the, the previous video, the idea here is that if you stay close to x equals 9 on this tangent line, you can see that the y values of the tangent line and the y values of the graph are very, very similar. As you get further and further away, you can see over here that y values are not very close as well as in the, if you go out in the, to the right. But if you stay close around 9, which 9.1 is close to 9, um, you'll notice that the, <coughs> the y value of the tangent line and the function are very, very similar. So the idea is, now, what we'd love, we'd love to have the actual value of square root of 9.1, okay, which is the value that's actually on the function at 9.1. So let's just say 9.1 is right there, okay, so that's the actual value in the function. But I notice the tangent line is just above that, okay, so the value on the tangent line is just greater than the actual value at 9.1. So, since we can't figure out square root of 9.1, essentially we can't just take 9.1 and plug it into the function and find that, what I will do is I'll take x equals 9.1 and I will plug it into my tangent line. So when I plug it in, I get y minus 3 is equal to 1 over 6 times, and I'm going to plug in 9.1 for x. So 9.1 minus 9. Now I've got to do some simplifying here, and I'm going to have some fractions to deal with. So 9.1 minus 9 is 0.1. I think I'll write that as 1 tenth, just so I can work with fractions. So 1 6 times 1 tenth. Okay. When I simplify that, it becomes, over here, y minus 3 is equal to 1 over 60. Okay. So when I add 3 to both sides, I get that y is equal to 
3 plus 160 or 3 and 160th. We can write it as if you wanted to make that a, you know, uh, um, into a not a mixed fraction. 3 times 60 would be 180. You do 181 over 60 if you wanted to. It's up to you. It's the same thing either way. Or you could write it as a decimal. Um, however, but the idea is that that value, 181 over 60, is approximately square root of 9.1. Okay? So that was our goal. Our goal is to figure out an approximation for this. So we know now that square root of 9.1 is approximately 181 over 60. All right? So that's the val that happens to be the value that's on the tangent line, which is close to the value that's on the square root of x function. Not exact, but it's close, so therefore that's an approximation. All right, and just, you know, just FYI on this, um, the actual value of square root of nine point one, since we, you know, have the ability to find that with a calculator, is actually, so this actual value is 3.0166, which is actually, if you divide 181 divided by 60, it is equal to, up until four decimal places, 3.0166. After that, it does start to, you know, um, go off after that, but... Um, it's not, and it's not the same. But you can see that it is a very accurate approximation in this case. So there are times where this tangent line approximation can be extremely accurate um, to approximate something. Now it happens that the slope is not very steep in this case, which helps, um, helps the cause in this case. If the slope's real steep and changes very suddenly, then um, you know, it's likely that your answer is going to be off by you know, more than we have right here. But anyways, you know, it's a good way to approximate something if you didn't have your calculator handy.